Hello, this is Moses Wen, and welcome to part 5 of my MATLAB tutorial series. Today I am going to talk about matrices. Matrices is a very important part of MATLAB, so it's yeah, very important to learn it. So let's start by telling you what a matrix is. So let's go to paint. So a matrix is basically just a grid of data. So here we have a grid and it's filled with data, a grid of data. So how we um, define the dimensions of this matrix is a three, we say three by four. So three is referring to the number of rows, four is referring to the number of columns. So it's always row by column. So this is a three by four matrix. So let's replicate this matrix in MATLAB. So we start off with a square bracket, type in all the elements in the first row, semicolon, all the items in the second row, semicolon, all the items in the third row. Yeah, so we have the same matrix right there. We can also use, a, use spaces instead of commas if we really wanted to. So yeah, we can use spaces or commas to separate either one. You decide. We can also type this in another way. So there. So basically what I'm telling MATLAB to do is in the first row put in 1 to 4, second row 5 to 8, third row 9 to 12. So what is actually 1 to f 1 semi colon 4? So what 1 colon 4 does is just make a row vector or just a single row matrix from 1 to 4 with just stepping up by 1 every time. So this will create a 1, 2, 3, 4. We can also change the increments that it steps up by. So we're going 1 to 2 and it's stepping up by 0.1 every time. 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way up to 2. So that's how we use the colons. So let's do some logical tests with matrices. matrices. So Let's say we've got our dandy matrix again. Let's let's store that as demo. Okay, so this is our demo. We can also use do logical tests to it. So let's say demo greater than five. So what it does is spits out a bunch of zeros and ones. So what it's doing is just applying this logical test to every single element inside demo and just bidding us back zeros and ones to tell you whether they're true or false. One is is one greater than five? No. False. If is two greater than five? No. False. Is six greater than five? Yes. One. So it just does that for every single element. And there's other stuff we can do as well. So how do we pull out a particular piece of data from a matrix? So let's say we want to just pull 5 out of this demo matrix. This is called matrix indexing. So what we do, we type out the name of the matrix and specify the particular row and the particular column. So this is in the second row and the first column. So it sp spits back 5. We can also take a whole range of values. So let's say we want this whole row. So we type demo, second row, and what columns we want. So what this does, 1 to n, is saying we want everything from column 1 all the way to the last column. So we want second row, 
from the first column all the way to the last column. So th it's this whole thing. We can also pull out data which isn't in the same row or column as well. So let's say we want 1 and 2 and 9 and 10 to form a 2 by 2 matrix. So once again, the name of the matrix, which is demo, what rows we want. So we want rows 1 and 3 and what columns we want. So that's 1 and 2. So 1 and 2. So it gives us back 1, 2, 9, 10 as what we wanted. The example I'm going to show you next will only work if you have just a singular row or singular column. So I've created this matrix called demo2 earlier and it's got a whole bunch of weird values. So I want to drop off all the ones which are less than 4. So drop off 3, 4, 3 and 4. How do I do that? First type the matrix name and type in the test condition. This may seem a particularly odd but I'll sh tell you how it works later. So there we go. We dropped off 3 so it's 5, drop 3, 5, 7, drop 4, drop 3, 6, drop 4, 6. So there we have it. So how this works is actually, this will spit back a bunch of 1s and 0s. So 1s and 0s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and then we put that through a certain condition. So let's say this is less than 5. So when that happens, we basically get a whole b bunch of zeros and 1s. So basically, this will have a whole lot of other values. So just star, 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 and star. So basically, what this does when we type, let's say we call this blah, and this is the result of blah greater than 5. So when we type blah, blah greater than 5, what it does is that it will go through, it will go through this blah greater than 5 and knock off every single element which is a 0. So this is a 0, so we'll knock this off. This is a 0, so we'll knock this off. So it will only display these three values and just squash up the matrix so it only shows these three values. So this is what it's done up here. So 3 is 0, 4 is 0, 3 is 0, 4 is 0. So it's just knocked off all the ones which are 0 and just compacted together to form that. So we can also, in that respect, we can also take, let's say, make demo 3 equal 1 to 9. And we can also do demo 3, demo 2 greater than 4. And it's just knocked off the respective zeros. So this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, and this is 0. So it's just knocked off the respective zeros to form that. Okay. So let's get on to other things you can do with matrices. You can find out the mean of matrices. So let's get demo2 back up. And we want to find the mean. So the mean is another way of saying average. So it's just a sum of all this minus how many elements are in them. So there we go, 4.7778. We can find the max. So the maximum value of this matrix, and we can find the minimum, and we can find the sum of the whole matrix, which is basically all of them added together, which is 43. So that's about it for today. I'm planning to make another tutorial. So my next tutorial, it'll just show you how to use these properly. Okay, that is all. Stay tuned.